Calorimetry uses a calorimeter. A calorimeter is an object used in lab to determine how much heat is associated with a chemical reaction. We often use a coffee cup calorimeter, which is constant pressure. Because the coffee cup is made of styrofoam, it absorbs very little heat from the reaction. The basis of calorimetry is the heat lost by a substance is going to be gained by another substance. Many times that other substance is water, but it's not always water. So Q lost or heat lost is equal to heat gained. When it's losing energy, it's going to have this negative showing that energy is going from the system to the surroundings or it's losing energy. From our previous section with specific heat, we said that Q is equal to MCP delta T. So since our Qs are equal to each other, we can just say negative M delta T C P is equal to M delta T C P. This one is the one that's heat lost, and this is the one that's gaining the heat. This side will always be the substance that starts at the higher temperature. So the substance that's starting at the higher temperature will be losing heat. The substance that's starting at the lower temperature will be absorbing that heat. So let's see what that looks like. Here we have a solid. Our solid is copper and our liquid is water. We have 20 grams of copper and we're going to be putting that in 100 grams of water. Our copper is being heated to 200 degrees Celsius and our water is at 20 degrees Celsius. So looking at this, who's going to be losing energy and who's going to be gaining energy? Copper should be losing energy because it's starting at the higher temperature. Water should be absorbing that energy. And up here, we'll have a graph showing the change in temperature. So let's see what that is. So we're dropping our copper into our calorimeter. Notice the temperature of water is staying relatively constant. It's increasing a little bit while copper is having a huge change in temperature and copper is decreasing. We can see our final temperature is popping up here. It's 23.2. So using this information, one, we can calculate the specific heat of copper. Without even calculating the specific heat of copper though, would we expect the specific heat of copper to be greater than or less than the specific heat of water? If you said the specific heat of copper is less than water, you are correct. Copper had a gr much greater change in temperature than water did. Water barely changed because its specific heat is much greater than copper's was. So let's bring this data back and solve for the specific heat of copper. We're going to be using this equation because we have two substances. We use this equation when we have one substance. When we have two substances, we're going to use our calorimetry equation. So we've said before that copper was losing energy. So this is going to be my copper information. And on this side, I'm going to have my water. To make it less confusing, we're not going to rearrange this equation. So we're going to have our negative and then our mass of copper was 20 grams. We don't know it's CP. And then our temperature, our final temperature, is always going to be the same for both substances. So 23.25 minus 200. gives me negative 176.75 degrees Celsius. Then on the other side, notice I have a negative change in temperature and I have a negative in front. So those are just going to cancel themselves out. Over on the other side, my mass of water was 100 grams. 
The CP of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And my change in temperature was final, 23.25 minus 20, so 3.25 degrees Celsius. So I would plug in everything on the right, so 100 times 4.184 times 3.25. And then everything on the left, so negative 20 times negative 176.75, and I bring down my x, which was cp. Now, to isolate my x, or cp, I divide both sides so my answer is 0 0.385 joules per gram degree Celsius. If you were to look that up on a reference table, you would see that copper does have a specific heat of 0.385. So this problem is very similar. It's just in words. And again, we know that we're going to have to use the, um, the calorimetry equation because we have aluminum and we have water. When you have two different substances, you have to have heat lost is equal to heat gained. If it was only talking about aluminum or only talking about water, then we're going to use the specific heat equation. That's how you can tell the difference. The only piece that's tricky on here is they gave you the volume of water. Remember that one milliliter equals one gram for water because the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So when it's water and they give you the volume, you can just say that that's how many grams you have. So let's solve this one together and then you can try the next one. So I write my equation. I say that one side's aluminum and one side's water. So I'm labeling my equations so I don't get confused and accidentally plug in information on the wrong side. Then I look and say that the aluminum was starting at 99 degrees Celsius and the water started at 22.6. So the aluminum is starting at a higher temperature so aluminum must be losing energy. So now I can start plugging it in I've got 3.90 grams of aluminum. I'm looking for the CP of aluminum. And my change in temperature, I can go ahead and solve that off to the side. So my delta T for aluminum is final. It says the final temperature of both of them is 28.6. Remember, a lot of times it's not going to tell you that it's of both substances. It may just say the final temperature of water is. The final temperature is always the same for both substances because they're going to keep transferring energy until they're both at the same temp. Notice, subtracting this, I get negative 70.4 degrees Celsius. I would expect a negative because aluminum started at the higher temperature. On the other side, my water, my mass of water was 10 grams. My specific heat of water in joules is 4.184. And my delta T for water, final was 28.6 and initial was 22.6. Giving me a difference of six degrees Celsius. So now I just need to plug in. I'm going to plug in everything on the right. So 10 times 4.184 times 6 gives me 251.04. And then everything on the left, negative 3.90 times negative 70.4 times x is 274.56 cp. 
remember that you can't have a negative at this line. So at this point, your negative should have already canceled out. Now to solve for CP, I'm going to just divide both sides by 274.56. And it says, go ahead and put your answer in three sig figs. So 0.914 joules per gram degree Celsius. Go ahead and pause the video and do this one on your own. Restart when you have the specific heat of iron. So you should have iron on one side, water on the other, and this one, iron also started at the higher temperature. The metal does not always start at the higher temperature, so make sure that you're just not making it a habit of always putting the negative on the left or always putting it with the one that's not water. My final temperature was 22.7, and the initial temperature was 100, so I got 77.3. And then my water says you had 27.3 grams. My specific heat of water still 4.184. And this time my change in temperature. Still 22.7, but it started at 21.2, which is a difference of 1.5. I'm going to plug everything in on the right. Make sure you're not rounding to, until the end. Notice I'm not putting my answer in three sig figs yet. I'm putting everything that the calculator gives me, or at least way more than I needed. So if I need three sig figs, I should have at least to the 0.33. Now multiplying the items on the left. Oh, notice I have a no negative and I have a negative. That would give me a negative here, so make sure that you're bringing that negative down. So then I get 389.36 CP. And I'm trying to isolate CP, so I need to divide both sides. So my specific heat is 0 0.440, rounding to three sig figs. So in this problem, you're trying to find the final temperature. So make sure that you star this problem or write this problem down, because anytime you're looking for final or initial temperature, it's always a more difficult problem. Just like before, though, we're going to have our calorimetry equation, the water that was starting at the higher temperature is going to go on one side and the water that's starting at the lower temperature will go on the other side. The side that's starting at the higher temperature should get that negative. So I'm going to plug in my mass of water, which was 35 grams. It's water, so I can use joules or calories, but I'm going to go ahead and use joules since we've been using that for this problem. And then my change in temperature, I don't know. But I do know that it's final minus initial. And my initial for that was 82. Don't forget the negative in front. If you leave that negative off, you will not get the right answer. On the right, the water that was at the lower temperature, we had 98.3 grams. It's still water, so it should be 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And again, it's final minus initial, but this time my initial is 42.4. Because we have water on both sides, this problem's a little bit easier than it would be if it wasn't two waters. Because I don't have to distribute as much, because I can ignore both of those because it's on both sides the exact same number. But now I'm going to have to distribute. 
Anytime you're looking for a final temperature, you distribute on both sides. If you're looking for initial temperature, you'll just distribute on one side. So what I'm doing is 35 times TF. So I get negative 35 TF. And now I'm going to do negative 35 times negative 82. Negative times negative should give me a positive number. So 35 times 82 gives me 2870. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the right. So 98.3 times TF should give me 98.3 TF. Now I'm going to do 98.3 times negative 42.4. A positive times a negative should give me a negative number though. So 98.3 times 42.4, 4167.92. Again, make sure you're not rounding to the end. And also make sure that you're writing very neatly. Since I'm looking for final temperature, I should have a TF on both sides, which I do. And now we're going to combine like terms. I like to get rid of my negatives, so I'm going to say plus 4167.92 plus 4167.92. That'll get rid of those. And then this is negative 35, so I'm going to say plus 35TF plus 35TF. So now I just need to add that up. So 4167.92 plus 2870, and then 98.3 plus 35. Don't lose your TF. Those had TF, so when I add them, I still have that TF. And now I just need to isolate my TF. So I'm going to divide by 133.3. My final temperature is 52.3. 8 degrees Celsius in three sig figs, which is what the problem asks for. Notice that that final temperature is between the initial temperatures of the two water. Depending on your masses of both is where it falls, so it's not exactly in the middle because I didn't have equal amounts of water. But it has to be between those two. So if I got in an answer of 35, they both can't go down. Or I can't get an answer greater than 82 because they couldn't go up if I mixed 82 and 42 degree water. So always make sure that your answer makes sense, which in this case it does. Go ahead and try setting this one up. Restart once you have the setup. Don't solve it all the way just in case your setup is incorrect. So again, restart when you have it all set up. So this one people struggle with again because it's initial temperature. But if it's initial temperature, you're only going to distribute on one side. So I write my equation out. One side's going to be sulfur and the other side's going to be calcium. Notice in this problem, we don't have water. We look, the sulfur starting at 45 and the final temperature is 79, which means that the sulfur was increasing in temperature, which means the calcium must be the one that's starting at the higher temperature. So my mass of sulfur was 4.093 grams. My CP of sulfur was 0 0.73. And my delta T for sulfur was 79, because that's final minus initial, which is 45. Notice how that gives me a positive number. That's another way that I know that calcium must be the one that gets the negative in front because sulfur, when subtracting final minus initial, gave me the positive number. Had this given me a negative, I would have known that sulfur got the negative. Calcium's mass should have been 8.022 grams. The specific heat of calcium was 0 0.650. And my change in temperature is TF, or T final, which is 79 minus TI. So this is your setup that you should have on your paper. Now we just need to solve. Unlike the last problem, notice our X is only on one side, so we're just going to distribute on one side. So I'm going to first plug this in because I don't have any X's. So 4.093 times 0.73 times 34. 
And on the other side, I'm going to do 8.022 times 0 0.650 times 79. So 8.022 times 0 0.650 times 79. Gives me 411.9297. Now I'm going to say 8.022 times 0 0.650 times ti. But notice I forgot that negative. Don't forget the negative. So that negative should be there, so that should be a negative 411. And then this one, we have negative 8.022 times 0 0.650 times negative ti. Negative times a negative should give me a positive. So 8.022 times 0.650. And again, that's a positive 5.2143. Don't forget to bring down your TI. I'm going to combine like terms. So there's my negative. So let me go ahead and get rid of that by saying plus 411.9297. Those cancel. Adding these up, I get 513.5179. Is equal to 5.2143 ti. I need to isolate my ti. So I divide. So the initial temperature was 98.5 degrees Celsius, which makes sense. This one's 98, the other one started at 45, and then they met at 79, which is between those two. All right, go ahead and try this one on your own. Notice it's a final temperature, so you're going to have to distribute on both sides. And in this problem, we have iron and we have water, so we won't be able to cancel anything out. But we'll distribute just like we did on this problem. The mass times the specific heat times one temperature, and then mass times specific heat times your unknown. So just like this, except it'll be Tf minus Ti. So go ahead and set this one up and try this one restarting once you have the answer or once you have your setup complete. So on this one you should have had iron on one side, water on the other. Our iron was our negative because it's starting at the higher temp. So negative 75.0 grams. Your CP of water. And for your change in temp, it should have been final minus initial, which was 430. On the other side, it was water, so our 45 milliliters was 45 grams. The specific heat of water was 4.184 joules, joules per gram degree Celsius. And it's final minus initial, which was 38 degrees. So then, if you did not get this, go ahead and pause the video and try distributing. If you did get this, go ahead and pause the video and distribute if you haven't already. And then restart to see if your distribution was correct. So you should have done negative 75 times 0.44 times TF. And then negative 75 times 0.44 times negative 430, which should give me a positive. 14190. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. 45 times 4.184 times TF, and then 45 times 4.184 times negative 38. Should give me a negative 7154.64. I'm going to combine like terms. So add 33 TF. Oh, notice I left off my TF over here. So this one should have been TF. So those are the mistakes that people make, so make sure that you're not making them. So my 33 TF plus 33 TF, so those will cancel. And then plus 7154 plus 7154. And I need to isolate my TF. So TF should be between 430 and 38, 96.5 degrees Celsius.